everybody who's been patient, everybody who's been waiting on the sidelines to buy a house and have been completely priced out of the market, I think is going to have a future spell of good luck because even Redfin themselves is predicting that in 2025, we are gonna see an absolute supply boom in the US housing market. And newsflash guys, that's already starting to happen, especially in certain markets like in Florida and Texas, places like that, you're already seeing the supply boom happen now. However, nationwide, inventory is slowly starting to pick up back to pre-pandemic levels. And I will show you guys some charts here in a minute to prove that. But for everybody who didn't buy into the FOMO and realized that, yeah, there will be another chance for me to buy a house in the future, is going to get rewarded for that patience eventually because there's a high probability that mortgage rates are going to start coming down over the next few months not by much at first but definitely be lower in 2025 than what we're looking at today and once the mortgage rates get low enough to incentivize a lot of sellers to sell their house you're likely to see a big uptick in inventory and we're already seeing it right now without the rates going lower now the one downside is mortgage rates are not likely to go below five and a half percent anytime soon guys like right now you're looking at at least six and a half percent for a 30-year fix but don't expect that to be a whole lot better in a year from now best case scenario maybe five and a half maybe 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 likely the only way that the rates will be lower than that in a year from now or by the end of next year is if the economy continues to get crushed and the Fed starts lowering rates faster than they raise them, which could be a possibility given how many layoffs we're seeing, how fast the unemployment rate is going up. There is a probability that they could jump in and try to save the day. So the way that you can kind of see this cycle playing out into the future is already happening right now, okay? This is a preview. And the preview is this. We have rising inventory nationwide, not saying it's rising everywhere, but nationwide inventory is up okay by a large amount and the sales volume at the same time is down by a large amount so all these people who are putting their homes on the market for sale are not finding the buyers they're not there to absorb that inventory and so over the next several years you're likely to continue seeing this pattern where you have more and more listings continue to hit the market and that gets compounded by the listings that are already on the market now which increases overall inventory while the demand suffers because all the sellers are still on yesterday's playbook they're all looking for these massive prices and they all are thinking yeah you know my house went up 40 50 60 70 percent i want to cash out now problem is no one's going to be there to pay those prices because people can't afford it but this dynamic is going to incentivize sellers because they're like hey i see interest rates coming down I see the value of my house is way more than I paid for it. So let me try to sell it and move to the property I've been wanting to move to or move to wherever I've been wanting to go. But when they go to list that house, they may find it's more difficult to sell for the price that they want to get than they originally thought. And that's where you come in, the patient buyer. Because when you take a look at this five-year chart of U.S. housing supply from Redfin themselves, or the ones who are saying we're going to see this explosion in inventory, you can see that right now there's about 1.8 million homes on the U.S. housing market, which is 15% higher than a year ago, which is a significant increase. And you can see we really haven't had inventory this high since at least the middle of 2022 but we can go back to june of 2019 here when there was about 2.4 million homes on the u.s housing market that's pre-pandemic well right now we're already at 1.8 million so that leaves us about 600,000 listings short of being at pre-pandemic levels of housing supply in the United States. So we're not that far off and you guys have seen how much it has climbed here over the past year. So it's reasonable to think that as rates come down and more sellers feel comfortable selling and listing their properties, then we're easily gonna hit this mark. And let's also not forget about all the delinquencies, all the people who are not paying their mortgages right now are also gonna be listings that are gonna be hitting the market because they're gonna to try to cash out and avoid foreclosure if possible. And if they can't, they will go into foreclosure and it will eventually become a listing anyways. So there's a lot of forces that are working with the market right now to produce more inventory in the next couple 
couple of years, as well as the fact that home builders are still building. And at the end of the day, we don't know how much home prices are going to drop in any given area, but if there's a lot of inventory hitting the market and it's not selling, it will be a race to the bottom, guys. You're going to see a lot of people start slashing prices to get their listing sold. And as soon as that house sells at that new lower price, that's a new comparable for the neighborhood that people have to compete with. Okay. And then if everyone starts listing at that price, somebody else is going to have to list even lower than that to get their house sold moving forward. So you can see how it puts downward pressure on prices as more inventory becomes available. Now you're going to have your sellers that, you know, just look at this and say, all right, well, I'm not getting the price I was hoping for. I guess I'll just stay put and I won't sell. You're always going to have a small percentage of people that do that. But you got to also understand that a lot of people don't do that because they're selling for a reason most of the time. You know, they're taking this as their opportunity, like, okay, I should sell now because of X, Y, and Z. And they put their life plans into motion to make that happen. And the odds of them reversing that because they're not getting the exact price they want are kind of low. And let's not forget that buyers are contending with a whole new problem pretty much starting this week. And that's going to be paying commissions to their real estate agent if the seller isn't offering one. You know, interestingly enough, ever since this whole lawsuit came into the picture and it was announced that the people who filed the lawsuit won against the National Association of Realtors, commissions have been coming down slightly on a nationwide scale. So not by much, but it has been coming down from about 2.65% to around 2.55%. So a, a decrease, but a negligible one. But I expect these commissions to probably fall even further, especially if a lot of buyers are stuck and are on the hook for paying their own agents, because if they already can't afford houses at these prices and interest rates, how in the world are they going to be able to pay their real estate agent, right? I don't really see a lot of sellers initially listing their homes for less money just because they don't have to pay the full commission anymore. They might realize as time goes on and as their listing sits on the market that, hey, maybe I should have offered a commission because you know otherwise no one's gonna be able to afford to buy my house or maybe I should lower the price those realizations will probably start coming sometime this fall is my guess because pretty much anyone who starts listing their house for sale this weekend on is going to face that decision do I pay the buyer's agents commission or not you can just throw this in the hat of yet another reason of why home prices are going to be coming down because we already see downward pressure just from the supply and demand side of things, right? The supply is rising simultaneously. The demand has been coming down. When you throw another wrench in there like this, like, oh, well, now you have to pay your own commission. That's even more of a reason for somebody not to buy, or if they do, to offer you even less than before. So I personally think, and you know, I don't have any incentive either way, guys, I'm not listing your home for sale. I'm not selling anybody houses anymore. But I think that a lot of sellers still have an incentive to offer a commission to the buyer's agent. Maybe it doesn't have to be as high as before, but if you're still offering a reasonable amount, that will help offset what the buyer actually has to pay their agent. So if you're looking to get top dollar for your house, I highly recommend offering somewhat of a buyer's agent commission moving forward. Because if you think you're gonna you know, list at full price and offer nothing and expect the offers to just roll in, that's probably not gonna work unless you're in a market where there's no inventory. You know, If you're in a place where inventory is still extremely low, you can probably get away with that. If inventory has been on the rise and is already close to pre-pandemic levels, you're not gonna be able to get away with it. But yet another reason why I believe Redfin is right and we are gonna see this massive uptick in inventory in 2025 is because homeowners are taking out home equity lines of credit at alarming rates right now, guys. And this just shows you that people are desperate, people are living off of the house, people are taking money out of the property, but you can't continue to do that forever. So according to the New York Fed, the home equity lines of credit have been going up higher than that we've seen in the past 13 years. Surprise, surprise. They found out that balances on home equity lines of credit have risen 20% since the end of 2021. HELOCs or home equity lines of credit are sitting at 9% interest rate right now, guys. I don't see how anyone thinks it's a good idea or in what scenario it makes sense to borrow that money. Some people say, oh, it's cheaper than you know taking on credit card debt. Well, yeah, but guess what? Credit card debt isn't tied to your house. So if you stop paying it, you're not gonna lose your home. 
versus a HELOC if you can't pay it for whatever reason, you are going to lose your home even though it's at a lower interest rate. In fact, right now the average HELOC loan is sitting at 9.18%. Guys, I don't know who's taking this at this amount. And HELOCs fluctuate. So even if you got yours at 6% a year ago, now it probably fluctuated and is up to this 9% mark because HELOC rates are not fixed. And the problem is people take out these HELOCs for all the wrong reasons. You know, they take it out for home renovations. They take it out to spend on weddings and vacations. They use it to put their kids through college. All the things you don't want to use this for. Really the only thing in my mind that would make sense taking out a 9% loan right now is if you're able to take out that money and invest it into something that's going to return you an even higher rate, which I feel like is basically impossible possible in today's economy. So really there's no good reason to take out a HELOC in 2024 that makes justifiable or financial sense. Now, some people even take out these HELOCs just to pay off credit card debt, guys. I can't think of a worse reason to do it other than the vacation and wedding thing. People even use HELOCs when it comes to debt consolidation, you know. They just have all this other debt and they figure, well, let's just borrow against the house and use the HELOC to basically roll all that debt into one lower interest rate loan and they think they're making a smart financial move when in fact it's the opposite. Here's the problem. People do this, right? And then you're hearing about all these layoffs. Well, guess what? People who have these home equity lines of credit are people that get laid off too. And now all of a sudden you lost your job and you can't make that payment. Now you're in a position where you're forced to list your house for sale because unless you can get another job and keep making that payment, you have no other choice. And if you have a lot of people falling on that same hard time at once, then you're in trouble. That's when you start seeing prices come down as inventory explodes. And you have to ask yourself, like if the economy is so good and people are doing so well financially, why are more people than ever taking out home equity lines of credit right now? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, they should just have the money, right? They shouldn't have to borrow anything if things are truly going well. I'm not borrowing any money to come out here to California and spend some time away from Miami. I'm not borrowing against my house to do this because if I was, I wouldn't be doing it. I'd be staying put. Now they say that a lot of people who are equity rich and cash poor are the ones taking out these loans right now because it's the only way to, to tap the equity in their house because they, they're not in a position where they can sell, meaning that they can't sell the house because they have nowhere else to go. They couldn't afford to rebuy the same house today if they had to pay today's rates and prices. So they're using the equity in the house to pay for stuff. That's a simple explanation of how people are using this. And they're doing this instead of doing cash out refinances, even though people are doing that too, because we've seen the refinancing activity tick up significantly over the past couple of months. But sometimes people do this because when you do a cash out refinance, you have to give up your low mortgage rate. So even though you can take a larger chunk of cash off the table, when you do a cash out refinance, you also lose that 3% mortgage rate that so many are desperate to hang on to. So you could almost look at it as like the people who take the HELOC loans are not as desperate as the ones who are doing refinancing right now. That's kind of like different levels of desperation, you know? The HELOC is kind of like the first level of desperation I ran out of money for that. Now it's time to do a full cash out refinance. Let's pay off the HELOC because I really need that money and I'll take on that higher payment for now until I just can't afford it anymore. And then we all know what comes next after that. And here's something interesting because 57% of these HELOC borrowers are age 50 and older, which I find kind of surprising because that's the segment of the economy that should be doing the best right now, right? They're the oldest generation. They should have the most wealth and money built up. Why on earth are you borrowing against your house at a 9% interest rate? And 28% of these recent HELOC loans are up to $100,000, guys, that people are borrowing against their home. So it's a significant amount of money that people are borrowing right now. But please don't listen to these stories and these people that say, oh, it's worth it to take a HELOC to make improvements to your home or to do this and that because it's not. In fact, one of my viewers, Jan, she wrote me this short and sweet email that kind of sums this up perfectly. She says, hey, Michael, I enjoy your YouTube videos. Perhaps you can talk about the people who have played a major role in getting us so far in debt. I think they are the companies that extend so much credit to people that shouldn't have. In any deal, there are three entities, the buyer, the seller, and the creditor. All three want the buyer to get the loan. Buyers often buy things they don't need with money they don't have. The gatekeepers should be the lenders, but they don't make any money if they do not write loans. 
And this is exactly correct, what Jan just said. People are in massive amounts of debt because it's so easy to get into that debt. You know, you're constantly being bombarded with commercials or mailers as a homeowner saying, hey, take out this home equity line of credit. You can refinance, blah, 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 blah. In fact, I'm gonna get to an email here in just a minute about refinancing because that's what all the lenders want you to do right now. They don't want you to keep your 3% mortgage rate. That's not profitable. Who wants that? You gotta understand, every time you refinance, every time you get one of these HELOCs, the lender makes money in the form of interest payments, in the form of origination fees, in the form of commissions just for generating that loan, all sorts of things. So it's not profitable to let you sit on the sidelines there with your 3% mortgage and just paying that off into eternity. No lender wants that. So yeah, the lenders are absolutely responsible, like Jan said, for this massive uptick in the amount of debt people have. And this includes all forms of debt. You know, you see people with huge uh, buy now, pay later loans that they're getting in order to pay for things. The lender's responsible for that. They're the ones constantly promoting, hey, hey, you don't have to pay for all this today. You can pay this off in three easy monthly payments with Klarna. You know what I'm saying? Here's an example from Fairway Mortgage. Haven't heard from these guys in a while. Things have been pretty quiet, probably because there hasn't been any excuse to try to get people to refinance or do anything. But now that mortgage rates are coming down, oh, they're coming out of the woodwork. Did you know that an estimated $11.5 trillion in capital equity in your current market? You see, it's exactly what they're getting, trying to get you to do, guys. Additionally, with rates coming down, now is an ideal time for homeowners and potential sellers to get off the sidelines and take advantage of these opportunities. Here are a few ways you can add value to your past clients, talking to real estate agents, right? Refinancing to pay off debt. Help your clients explore refinancing options to consolidate and pay off high interest debts using their home equity. This can provide significant financial relief and improve their overall financial health. Yeah, until they can't pay for that anymore and then they lose their home and you foreclose because, oops, we decided to put our house on the line to uh, refinance our high interest debt. Not smart, guys. They want you to tap into home equity for upsizing or downsizing. Basically, move. Let's get you out of that 3% mortgage rate and let's get you into a nice, fresh 6.5% one. They want you to invest in home improvements like we just talked about. Equity can also be used for home improvements that increase property value and enhance living conditions. This can be a great way for clients to invest in their current home equity and enjoy the benefits of those improvements. And at the bottom here, of course, they say, let's work together to tap into this incredible opportunity opportunity and make a positive impact on your clients lives so what exactly is the positive impact again by giving up that low interest rate loan or getting into a higher interest rate loan what exactly is the positive impact for you to have all of your debt riding against your house and then you can't pay it for whatever reason something happens in life especially with this shaky economy and now you're forced to sell your house and lose all that how does that positively improve your life again Tell me, guys. Tell me how. All this stuff is a complete lie designed to get you further into debt and to get you to hand over an opportunity of a lifetime that you were given with your 3% mortgage rate. Okay, if you, if you are someone who has this right now, you should try to hang on to it. But I know how life works. And no matter what, most people are going to have to give that up at some point in the future due to some major life event or change that's outside of their control. Okay, so no matter how many people have these 3% mortgage rates right now, it's not really gonna matter in say five to 10 years from now because most of them will have rolled over and sold those houses because of one reason or another at that point. And I just wanna show you guys one last point in this video of why you're gonna see inventory continue to climb because a lot of you know that uh, one area I like in Florida is Palm Coast, I like Northeast Florida. If I were to move somewhere else in Florida, I would probably move to this area away from Miami. So I'm always looking at houses there just out of curiosity to see what's for sale, whatever. And today I saw this new listing come up and this just goes to show you how desperate a lot of home sellers are getting right now. Take a look at the very first line in the description of this home, okay? Seller may consider buyer concessions if made in an offer. That's the very first line of the entire description of the home. So which just goes to show you that's the most important thing they want all buyers to know that the seller's willing to give concessions, which they're probably referring to commissions, right? Because now that this whole change is taking place basically this week, then buyers are on the hook for making that payment now to their agent unless the seller pays it. 
or at least part of it. So the first thing they want the buyer to know is that the seller is willing to give you extra money towards buying that house. And when have you seen that in the past couple of years? You wouldn't. All you would see is, oh, oh, this property is getting multiple offers. Hurry now before it's gone. You know, stupid stuff like that in the listing. And now they're telling you, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be willing to give you some money to buy this place. <laughs> So things have shifted up tremendously, guys. You know, a lot of people have said that I'm wrong and other people like me on YouTube have been wrong about this housing crash and things turning around and how bad this economy is. But the reality is it has all just taken a little bit longer than we thought it was going to. And now it's all starting to happen in real time. Have things completely collapsed? Will things completely collapse? Probably not. It's not like it's that dramatic. I know sometimes we have to make it seem like that here on YouTube is with the titles and the thumbnails and stuff like that, because otherwise no one watches the video. But once you're watching my videos or anybody else's, you can see that what we're talking about here isn't total collapse. What we're talking about is how things are fundamentally changing right before our eyes and it, the proof is all around us. You know, we don't have to really look for it anymore. It's everywhere. So anybody who does end up getting a good deal over the next couple of years, feel free to let me know about it. I'll be happy to hear about it. And don't forget guys, anybody who does need a real estate agent, whether it's for the selling side or the buying side of any transaction here in the United States, I can set you up with an agent. I always have that link down in the description below. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, Check out this one on the screen right over here, and I will see you in the next one.